Hi, everybody. Welcome to Reader's Intrigue, where authors are going to read the first chapter of their book so that we can be intrigued and maybe find a new book to read. Get comfy, get cozy. Let's listen. I'm happy to be here this morning on Reader's Intrigue to share a little bit with you about my romantic suspense novel called Lure, Jesse, and Hawk. I'm a West Coast writer living in the Pacific Northwest, and I write a lot of different things. I have a series called, with myth, magic, and mayhem called The Hollystone Mysteries, and it has four books, soon to be five, To Charm a Killer, To Sleep with Stones, To Render a Raven, To Kill a King, which is historical fantasy, and um, To Dance with Destiny, which should be out hopefully by Halloween. And so today I'm going to read from Lure. And Lure is romantic suspense, a small town grit. I, I wrote the bones of this story 30 years ago and when I was leaving my husband and starting my degree in Indigenous studies. And uh, I packed it away and pulled it out a couple of years ago and thought, oh, Paul, I'm going to rewrite that. So I did. And I'm really happy what ha with what happened to it. The same characters are there, except uh, a few, another one appeared. And that was because Jesse, who is the main character, who is living alone on the Chippewa Reservation, uh, found a hand, a skeletal hand coming up in her shed that um, belonged to a young woman who had disappeared uh, 20 years before. And when I asked the young woman who she was, she told me her story. And so her mystery and the story of, of her uh, tragic death, it weaves its way through this romantic um, adventure. And the other character, of course, is Hawk, who is also, he's a doctor um, who has, is grieving over a situation and he is living in a cave out on the Chippewa Reservation. And of course, as in all romance, the two come together and uh, that's what happens. So I'm just going to read a little bit from the first scene and I hope you enjoy it. The scene is called Deer Slayer. Jessie held her breath, her muscles as tense as the trees hiding her. Through the telephoto lens of her old Nikon F2, the buck appeared close enough to touch. Angled perfectly, he browsed a patch of wild strawberries at the edge of the thicket. Sunlight broke through the pines and stretched across the glade, framing the deer in a golden glow. Jesse was downwind. The light was ideal. The moment was perfect. The buck glanced up, uneasy, perhaps perceiving her presence with some intuitive force known only to animals surviving in the wild. Stay with me. I won't hurt you. I only want to show the world how beautiful you are. The faintest crackling twig, blurred wave scratch or yawn would send the buck dashing, white tail erect. She knew he'd bolt at the first click of the shutter and was glad of it. His wariness would keep him alive, but the first shot had to be the best. He dropped his head to browse and she sipped in a breath. Then he raised it again, turned his thick neck and stared in her direction. The white rectangular patch on his neck matched that of his inner ears and the edge of his black button nose. Jesse focused on the eyes, black and intense, they bored straight through her soul. Pressing her finger to the shutter, she heard the motor drive fire. One, two, three, then a soft whoosh, a muted thwack. Glazing hard, the black eyes slid from view as she stared through the lens, heart racing, mind spinning. The butt crashed to his knees, shaking the earth as he hit the ground. Letting go of the shutter release, Jesse sprang from the bushes but her right foot caught one leg of the tripod and sent her sprawling into a patch of stinging nettles. Cursing, she picked herself up and ran to the deer, wringing her throbbing hands. Smeared berries marred the buck's moist black nose. The dead eyes stared. She knelt and touched the tip of his thick bulbous antlers. They'd not yet hardened into points. He was young and healthy. Tears burned in her eyes. Working as a nature journalist, she encountered wounded and dead animals at times, but each one broke her heart. You poor thing, what happened? 
When she noticed blood beneath the buck's left foreleg, she used both hands to shift the body. A broken arrow jutted from a gash. Head up, she took a quick breath. Hunters? Where? Glancing around the glade, she searched for camouflage or neon flashes. Seeing nothing, she stared back down at the deer. Studded with the feathers of a red-tailed hawk, the arrow was blood spattered and driven into the soil. Its sapling shaft had splintered under the buck's weight. Had the arrow pierced its heart? She hadn't expected to encounter hunters here on the reservation. Deer season didn't start until September and it was only June. Shaking her head, she fumed. Unbelievable, hunting out of season and with a homemade arrow. Then she realized that the whoosh she'd heard had been the arrow whizzing past her and her stomach flipped. He'd been standing behind her the whole time. What if his aim had been off and he'd hit me instead? Jessie's flesh prickled as she sensed his presence. The great hunter had come to claim his kill. Reaching out, she curled her fingers around a jagged rock. She'd chosen to live out here, alone in the bush, and she would take a stand for herself and the deer. This beautiful head wouldn't adorn some killer's wall if she could help it. And if he tried to take more than a trophy, she'd give him a fight. Thrusting out her chin, she threw back her head defiantly, turned and yelled, murderer. But her first glance sent her sliding back onto her hip. Backlit by the sun, the man was shrouded in gold, his face obscured by shadows. Wavy blonde hair hung long and loose well past his thick shoulders. He braided red-tailed hawk feathers down one side. A small bag hung from a rawhide thong around his neck and lay against the blonde hairs on his muscular chest. A skin quiver packed with arrows dangled from his shoulder. He was naked except for a rag of buckskin laced low along his pelvis. Jessie's breath caught and she coughed. Then catching herself staring, she glanced down at the deer to calm her racing heart. Her gut told her the man wouldn't harm her and she trusted it. She had to living out here. He only wants the deer, so give him the deer. The voice in her head was confident and condescending, undeniably Alec. Sweat trickled into Jessie's eyes and she rubbed it with a fist. No, it's not right. She tried to predict the hunter's next move. He was movie star hot. Perhaps they were filming on the reservation or he was engaged in some historical reenactment. When he approached, she saw his boots, deerskin moccasins with puckered seams. She'd bought herself a pair like that at the local trading post, but hers were tall to her knees and decorated with fancy beadwork. His were plain and laced tightly around his ankles, decidedly homemade. Pale yellow hairs feathered his tanned legs. The man was clearly not Chippewa, but what then? An actor, an eccentric, a lunatic? A rush of adrenaline tightened her gut and brought her up to her knees. The hunter's hot breath brushed her neck as he reached down to claim his kill. Incensed, Jessie turned and their eyes locked. A rush set her fingers trembling. Then regaining her composure, she flung her arm around the buck's net. No, leave it. She pounded the ground with her free fist. Rocking back on his heels, the hunter laughed and shook his head in derision. Jessie squeezed the rock, wanting to smack the smug grin from his face, even though he was armed and could best her. Tall and wiry, the man seemed as innate to the bush as the buck, and two somehow conjoined. Was this how he lived? She wanted to know. Can't you speak? Still, he stared at her with that crooked, mocking grin and said nothing, though his arrogant eyes spoke reams. What's your story? Do you live out here on the land? Is that how you survive? Her mind flung questions she couldn't voice. She ran her fingers between the dare's dead eyes and thought of the soldiers, who'd shot thousands of buffalo and left them rotting on the plains. A murderous means to a murderous end, a strategy intended to starve and cripple a people. But what if this man needed to eat? She thought of his moccasins and that deerskin rag around his hips. He wasn't just a trophy hunter, he was something else, something she didn't understand. Huffing, she released her grup on the buck. Seizing the deer, he hefted it over his shoulders, turned and swaggered into the forest. Murderer, she yelled again claiming the last word to soothe her indignity. When he disappeared, she stood and brushed herself off. As she stamped back to salvage her camera gear, she chastised herself for giving in to this raw skinned stranger. It galled her that he'd ridiculed her for something she truly believed in, saving animals by showing the world their beauty. Still, she couldn't get her heartbeat to slow 
or his face out of her mind. Nostrils flaring from a long, sharp nose, slender cheeks pulled taut over high bones, full lips pulled straight between heavily bearded cheeks. And those eyes, lucid and entrancing one moment, dancing disdainfully the next, and silver as moon dust. He'd hefted the book over his shoulders like it was a mere hide when it must have weighed at least 150 pounds. And what was he wearing? He looked like some Viking warrior playing at being 17th century Chippewa. No one dressed like that. It was all denim and cotton tees. This was 21st century America. Baffling and beguiling, the man had effectively paralyzed her without uttering a word. Embarrassed that she'd given in so easily, Jessie vowed that if she ever saw him again, she'd hold her ground. But the thing that gnawed at her the most was how much she wanted to see him. So there you go. That's the first scene from Lure, Jesse and Hawk. And if you're interested, you can look it up on my website, bluehavenpress.com. It's also on Amazon. Uh, it's right now it's on Kindle Select. So if you have that, you can read it for free or you can get the ebook. It's, um, it's also in print. I'd suggest if you're interested in print, you contact me and uh, get a hold of me that way. I can mail it to you, especially if you're in Canada. And um, yeah, uh, it's also an audio book. So if you have Google Play or Kobo, you can find it as an audio book. I'm happy to be here today on Reader's Intrigue. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, little scene into, uh, into my story. And uh, yeah, come by my website, sign up for my newsletter, so you can keep in touch and uh, leave me a comment. Cheers. Thank you again to the amazing author that read us a story. And be sure to check out all the other amazing shows on RB Media. Till next time. Bye.